Hello, I'm Simon Rose uh, and thank you um, firstly for joining me for this session. This session is going to be focusing on um, the work that uh, the Think Aorta campaign has been doing to educate paramedics within the UK. Um, a little bit about myself briefly, so I'm a paramedic by background, um, I work in the East of England. I'm also a lecturer at the University of East Anglia and I'm also the pre-hospital lead for the Think Aorta campaign. Um, Firstly, a massive thank you to the conference organisers for inviting me to present today um, and in person in Bristol on the 16th of September. Really looking forward to the in-person event and uh, I think it's a great opportunity to get together again and, and discuss what needs to be done to um, improve and, you know, try and fix some of the problems around aortic dissection. So, Moving into the content then, before we kind of get really into it, what I want you to do, uh, you know, in the audience is to think of um, think of a word or think of a, you know, a bit of a description of, you know, what you think about when I say paramedic, you know, as a profession, what we do on a day to day basis. What you might think of is something like this, where it's a dynamic role, um, often working in different environments as part of a team. Um, providing an emergency or urgent care to a patient in need. You might think something like this, so obviously this one is taken in the ambulance where you know potentially putting uh, or inputting life-saving drugs or treatment into patients en route to hospital. You might think about the kind of dynamic responses we do, so obviously you know urban areas, rural areas, you know often see ambulances bombing about and that's a very dynamic role. Or additionally, we might uh, think of you know the air ambulance and and the the role that they play within treating the life threatening conditions that they go to. But where I want to start this kind of this process really is that where where the pre hospital education um, you know where the inception really happened. So it was actually in hospital. So all, all these things we think about pre-hospital care and you know that emergency environment, it was actually the James Paget University Hospital um, in Galston, which is right on the east coast of the east of England. Um, it's quite a small district hospital um, that serves Great Yarmouth in, in, in that area. Um, and that is actually where the the inception to this uh, this whole pre-hospital branch of Think Aorta really became um, you know became a project. So, so uh, while studying um, my paramedic science uh, program, I was coming to the end of my training and I was lucky enough to attend a, a brief educational kind of CPD session based in the emergency department and for the hospital teams. Uh, you can see I stand out a little bit there, I'm the only one in green with an ambulance on my back, but the rest of them are uh, registrars, nurses, consultants. Um, but this just wasn't any CPD session. This was um, a Think Chaota uh, CPD session. It was based on uh, Brian's story, who unfortunately lost his life um, in the Norfolk area through a missed aortic section. And what stuck out for me is really the the, the human element of it. So uh, Ailing, as you can see in the left-hand picture there, opened with Brian's story. And unlike other um, educational sessions in um, in healthcare, this had real heart to it, and that that was really inspiring, actually. And then um, one of the main consultants in the, the James Paget Emergency Department, Jim Crawford, he then um, led the educational part of the session. And what I really took away from that is this, you know, this opportunity of you know, there's a real patient story there, and there's so much education to be to be had around the education section, but thinking back to my training I had uh, I have nothing so as a paramedic often we're the first point of call for these type of patients and I think there was maybe a slide a very brief slide in part of one lecture probably covered 30 seconds to a minute um, so you know I felt like there was an opportunity there to improve that within my my profession so what I did is I, I reached out, I emailed the Think Aorta campaign. At the end of the session, it said that um, you know they were happy for people to contact them. I got in, got in contact via the website and just said, you know, I really was inspired by the session. Is there anything, um, any kind of educational, educational settings that you currently provide uh, paramedics education in? And they said no, they were they were looking at an opportunity, um, but at the minute it was just emergency department. 
And so uh, between us, we came up with uh, a bit of a proposal. Uh, I said that I would um, help them break into the pre-possible field, um, but I need to know a little bit about them. And so this slide here is essentially what, what I was sent. It was what the, the whole Think A or campaign was really about. So as you can see there, it's um, you know really driving that, that process of change. So you see the cogs on the left hand side there. So awareness and training, that is something I felt I could directly have a positive impact on. Um, routine diagnostics, obviously more for the emergency department, but what, what I took from that is actually as pre-hospital clinicians, we can have a big say in what type of diagnostics they get when they get to the emergency department. And then the organization of the emergency um, emergency protocols and services and actually through policy changes um, we can all change that so the the main one there is the top one awareness and, and the training around the education of, of air dissection i thought i could really have a big impact on so over the next few months um, i created a, uh, a pre-hospital resource a lecture on think aorta um, aimed at paramedics and technicians within ambulance services and universities um, who are currently delivering their programs and I'm delighted to say that in uh, January 2019, we launched the first Think Aorta pre-hospital lecture. Um, this was to paramedic science students at the University of East Anglia. So at the time, I, I didn't work there. It, I just proposed the idea to them. And uh, another, another one of the lecturers thought it was a really good idea. And by July of that year, we um, had got to train over 100 paramedics to Think Aorta. So something that, you know, given the inception of it and starting in the January of that year, we, you know, by just over halfway through the year, we actually trained over 100 paramedics. So these were the first paramedics in the UK to have a Think Aorta session. And the sessions continued. So after we got to 100, I, I didn't want to stop it there. We kept uh, putting on additional one-off sessions. So you can see there the Paramedic Society, uh, that was at the University of Anglia. Um, we also had the Paramedic Society at Anglia Ruskin University. And then we also did sessions for the East of England Land Service as well, so directly um, going into the ambulance services and doing face-to-face -face sessions. So we didn't stop there. We um, continued with the, the keeping the ball rolling in terms of our education and who we're delivering to. So we presented at the National Pre-Hospital Educators Symposium, uh, which was held at the University of East Anglia. Um, this was targeted more education educators and educational kind of leads within pre-hospital care. Um, so we'd gone from maybe doing paramedic students to the ambulance service to then directly doing kind of educators, mentors within their fields. So that was a really good opportunity. And again, that was keeping the ball rolling and the momentum going on this project. That uh, directly led actually to uh, myself being invited onto a small um, specialized group of uh, well specialisms and, and clinicians that um, basically help create the GLCALC vascular emergencies guidelines. So anyone who isn't aware of GLCALC, it is the main uh, clinical guidance for pre-hospital clinicians. So all paramedics and technicians within the UK will have a, a good understanding of what GLCALC is. And prior to this, there wasn't any, any real uh, universal guidance for aortic dissection. And as you can see here um, in the red aortic dissection was a big part of that, as, as well as aneurysms and ischemic limb conditions. Um, and even things like diabetic foot, but obviously my main input was on aortic dissection. Um, and I'm so really honoured to be part of that. And it's actually, you know, a big part of, you know, the project we've done is in terms of the outcomes has been to create these guidelines to help everyone in the UK who works in the pre-hospital service. However, um, coming towards the end of 2019, 2020, this happened. Uh, as we all know, we don't need any notes. Uh, we regularly saw these three gentlemen in our top left hand corner there um, on our channels. Coronavirus became the, the biggest pandemic that the, the UK has is, is probably ever seen. And um, you know, virtual Zoom calls all became a thing of the norm where before that they were used very infrequently. So that obviously did put a, a bit of a, um, put the brakes on our, on our progress. However, we've come out the other side now. It's still obviously an ongoing issue and you know things change from day to day. However, 2021 has been a new year and we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I had a meeting with our, our Think A or lead, Gareth Owens, who obviously is a big part of what we've been doing as a survivor himself. Um, and we came up with a new strategy. 
we'd really kind of really hit hard the east of England in terms of where we were aiming our resources for. However, you know, there's a lot of paramedics in the UK and a lot of areas who still needed that, that message. I think I ought to needed some kind of education. So we sat down and um, between us came up with a new project. So Project PET. Um, so the PrEP project literally stands for Pre-Hospital Regional Education Programme. So what we wanted to do is mirror what we were doing in the east of England to try and spread it out for the UK. Obviously, this is a big, big project, so um, it was had to be broken down into sections. So the main objectives of the projects were to roll out Think Aorta to universities and ambulance trusts um, regionally across the UK, to adopt a train the trainer approach to session delivery. Um, as an individual, as a clinician, I recognised that I couldn't deliver all these sessions um, throughout the UK. However, using a, tra using a train the trainer approach, I could to deliver the core content to a, a Think Aorta champion, excuse me, and um, they would be able to deliver that message. And that one of the key points I wanted to keep in this project is to have that human element. Every time we delivered a session, we had a patient story at the core of it. And that's one thing between the um, Think Aorta campaign and then the um, patient association, we were able to, we've been able to link up um, survivor stories or people so who have sadly lost their lives and the relatives have been really keen to share their stories. We've been able to keep that as a big part of this educational session. Um, and then the last objective was to use multimedia channels. With COVID we recognised that it was a, there was a need to adapt um, and so that was a big part of our, our kind of mission objective for this project. So what we've got here is a bit of a breakdown into the areas we initially targeted. So in the red, you can see, we know Think Aorta had regular sessions there, but what we were looking for is to get some sessions into Wales and, and in Scotland as well, and to really break some of that uh, divide between England, Scotland and Wales. So uh, we became um, familiar with some colleagues in the uh, Welsh Ambulance Service, and then um, I also reached out to some of the universities up in Scotland and I'm delighted to say that actually um, the University of Stirling up in Scotland have now adopted a Think Aorta um, programme, a, a resource as part of their, I think it was a year twos uh, on their BSc programme and the Welsh Ambulance Service are literally about to release a podcast which is a Think Aorta um, podcast for their internal clinicians. So this is a brilliant resource and it really expands, um, you know, expands our audience in terms of getting people to think aorta. So you here is just the updated um, obviously diagram of the UK to show that actually now you know we're starting to make progress in these countries with those resources available in Wales and Scotland. And in terms of evaluating our progress to date, um, we're now up to 700 paramedics or pre-hospital clinicians who have actually been taught to think aorta. So that's whether that be a regular um, cohort at the University of East Anglia, um, through the podcast in Wales, through the um, sessions in uh, University of Stirling, Scotland, through CPD events and one-off kind of um, educational sessions. We're, we're now over 700, which is brilliant considering where we started at the beginning of 2019 with our initial cohort. We had about 30 or 40 people. To be over 700 paramedics is amazing. Um, obviously, the Jail Calc Vascular Registry Guidelines were published, which again is another brilliant resource for our pre-hospital clinicians, and I um, think it all have had, it's had a really positive impact on that. Um, and then we've also um, actually produced the first advanced practice I think Aorta session, which was created for the University of Stirling. So not only are we um, educating our, our pre-hospital clinicians, we're actually educating advanced clinicians as well. So this is things like nurse practitioners, advanced paramedics, they're all now having a Think Aorta session as part of their enhanced clinical assessment module for their, um, their postgrad. And then finally, um, we've, as I kind of mentioned, the first Think Aorta pre-hospital podcast was created. So that was in collaboration with the Welsh Ambulance Service. So these are some of the key, you know, milestones we hit today. However, you know, as that background shows you, it's a long road where you know there's 700 paramedics that have been taught to Think Aorta. Um, I believe there is over 20,000 registered paramedics in the UK, so we've we're still got a long way to go. And as that road does definitely show, there may be bumps in the road like COVID and pandemics being thrown our way. But I, I thoroughly believe that you know it, the campaign can keep going and we can get more of that UK map read. 
And ultimately, actually, to, to give you the larger scale is to, to move it into a global um, educational programme. So I think AORA is doing a brilliant job in terms of now accessing more countries. As you can see, the USA there um, recently been launched in, um, in Brazil. Um, you know, all, the, all these countries still, still need a resource and education can be enhanced. So that is ultimately, you know, the long term aim is to focus uh, well, my job is to focus on the pre-hospital side, and so we can try and develop some of these other countries to get their paramedics or their EMTs or whatever pre-hospital service they utilise within their healthcare system to think a water. So for those of you listening to this, uh, you know, you might be thinking, sitting there, so what can I do? So, you know, how, how can I go about doing some of the things that, you know, that the campaign's done, that, that you've done? So you can teach your teams to think aorta. How do you do this? You can download and use the resources. So at thinkaorta.net, um, we have some educational resources there. Um, you can join the Aortic Dissection and Awareness UK and Ireland. So that's the patient association. Um, we, we, you know, we've, the Think Aorta program is in strong collaboration with them all the time. It is all about you know saving lives essentially, and that's why we want to enhance the education of our pre-hospital teams, of our ED teams, of our surgical teams, emergency department. So, you know, this is something that we need to keep going. And then finally, you know, in your practice areas, develop your policy, your guidelines and adopt best practice in your workplace. I mean, do, do you know what your best practice is? How are you looking to reduce maybe the misdiagnosis? Um, so, you know, think of what you're doing currently for, for air to dissection. You know, could there be any small changes that enhance your practice? And ultimately, the clues in the title, we want you to think aorta. You know, next time you come across a chest pain, a back pain, an abdominal pain, just think, could this be an aortic dissection? Think aorta. And then finally, um, contact us. So there's um, some details there. So on Twitter, so think aorta. Um, I think it's a double underscore in the center there. Um, you've got um, my Twitter as well. So at Simon Rose Paramedic. The email, so that is directly for the pre-hospital arm, but feel free to contact me anytime on that email. And then the website as well, which you'll find some educational resources and further contact information. Um, so finally, just to wrap up for me, I'm really um, honoured to be able to speak to you today. And um, I hope you have a, a great kind of rest of your virtual conference. Thank you.